So Luke chapter 19, if you got it, say amen. If you need a minute, say give me a minute. All right, I'll let you get a minute. So Luke 19, <clears throat> your minute is up, your time is up. Let's stand as we read God's word. That's what we do to honor him here at Living Water. We honor his word by standing for it. Luke 19, verses 1 through 10. You got it, say amen. amen. He entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief cha uh, tax collector. And he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd since he was a short man. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus since he was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down because today it is necessary for me to stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to stay with a sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor, Lord. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and save the lost. Father, you are good. And your love endures forever. And Father, we ask that you would just pour your love down on us more. God, we are ready for, for what you are going to do. We are expecting big things today. And so, Lord, I just ask that you just move through us. Father, I pray, God, that you would open up my, uh, our eyes so that we can see your word more clearly. Father, I pray that you open up our ears so we can hear your word more clearly. Father, open our hearts so that we can feel your word more clearly. God, we're ready for transformation. Father, we're ready for the newness of you in our lives. And we just ask that you just move in us. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're having a seat, turn to three people and say, there's something about peace. <laughs> I have this spot, I have this, this place that I like to just go and be alone with Jesus. I can be my front porch, it can be my back porch. We have this chair in our bedroom that sits by this window that I sit in when it's windy and cold like today. Or I'll go to my office. And in this spot and in this place, it's just a place where I can go and sit down and clear my mind. It's a time for me to sit and listen. It's a time for me to, to watch the clouds as they move or feel the sun on my face or the wind blow my hair. <laughs> Sometimes I have worship music playing and all I can do is just worship God. But I spend that time just relaxing in peace. And as I'm sitting in my spot, as I'm sitting in this place, I imagine Jesus is sitting next to me. And I can hear him speak to me. And sometimes he and I have deep conversations, and other times I just love sitting in his presence. Can I tell you something? I am so glad that we serve a God that is present. Maybe you didn't hear me. I am so glad that we serve a God that is present. But here's my question to you. Do you have a spot? Do you have a place where you can go and find peace and just hang? Maybe for young mothers with children, it's a locked bathroom door for just a moment, right? As kids are sneaking their fingers underneath the bottom of the door. Maybe it's your garage or maybe it's a closet. But the question that I have is, is do you have a spot where you can go and sit in peace. If we look at the definition of the word peace, it means state of calm, of freedom from strife or discord, or harmony in personal relationship. Say there's something about peace. We are jumping in to Luke chapter 19. Last week, if you were here last week, we were tackling Luke 18. And here we see that Jesus is entering 
into the town of Jericho. Lot, last week we saw him, he was coming, he was approaching the town of Jericho, and then he met a man by the name of Bartimaeus. And he touched this man and, and healed him. Now he's walking into the gates of Jericho. And I believe that Bartimaeus has now joined the crowd of Jesus walking into Jericho. Let's break these verses down uh, and get out there. So if you close your Bible, open your Bible back up. Take some notes. I encourage you to take some notes or pull out your phone, do what you got to do. But we'll go from there. So let's look at it. Let's look at verses 1 through 4. So here it is. Jesus, he entered Jer uh, Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. He was rich. I find it interesting that the scripture said a chief tax collector. And he was rich. That's how I read it. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But he was not able because of the crowd since he was a short man. So running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus since he was about to pass that way. Now you have to understand that Jews, during this time, they were under the control of Rome. So the Jews had to pay taxes to the Roman Empire. And Rome would go out and they would employ Jews to collect taxes from their own people. However, these tax collectors not only collected the, the taxes, but they took a little bit extra for themselves. So needless to say, the Jews were not fond of Jewish, Jewish tax collectors. In fact, they would consider them traitors. And that's why we see in the New Testament, you'll typically see tax collectors mentioned alongside prostitutes and sinners. So my man Zacchaeus had a lot of money and very few friends. Maybe no friends at all. I'm sure uh, he was looked down upon by his countrymen as a thief, as a crook. He probably wasn't very kind to some people because let's be honest, when people are not kind to you, you turn out to be not kind to them, right? Am I speaking to anybody here today? Any real people today? Because all of you are like, oh, no, I'm a Christian, you don't do that. <laughs> Good. But sometimes when people attack you, don't you attack back? Yes. It's just the nature. Right? And that's, I'm pretty sure that Zacchaeus was called a few names. And he wasn't kind to the people he took to, to collecting taxes from. Him. So I, have, I wonder this question. Was he power hungry? Was Zacchaeus money hungry? I mean, he was getting rich off of everyone in his town or in his region. So I often wonder... Did he have any friends at all? Did he eat alone? What went through his mind in his alone time? Did he think, why did I agree to do this? Did he sit there and say, this is not who I want to be? I wonder if he battled the thoughts within himself about the man that he wants to be in his alone time. Have you been asking these same questions that maybe Zacchaeus is asking in his alone time? Why did I do this? This is not who I want to be. I had a friend of mine, I have a friend of mine, who about 20 years ago got in a serious car accident. He was the one that was driving, and he had three or four of his buddies in his car. And as he was driving, it was during frontier days, and as he was driving, some of the buddies in the car, they were all pretty well liquored up, but he was the sober guy. He was driving uh, late at night, it's about 11.30, 12 o'clock at night. And he's driving and his light turned green. As he started to go, a truck, uh, an F-350, uh, uh, a full-time truck, hit him in the middle of his car in a van. The person in the passenger seat landed in his lap and died. The other guys in the cars got broken necks, broken bones, whiplash, all that other stuff. And it actually threw his car 30 feet in the air and it rolled and it landed on this like island. Of course, that buddy of ours was a close friend of ours and he passed away and we went to uh, his funeral and all that stuff. But he pulls me aside and he says, Jay, I can't go down this road anymore. I'm not talking about the road he got in the but the road of his life. He says, I can't go down this road anymore. 
He says, I have two options. I can continue to go down this road, uh, this destructive road, or I could go after Jesus. And Jason, I want Jesus. I choose Jesus. So he gave his life to Jesus, and we baptized him, and then he went on to be a youth pastor. You see, it was peace who stepped in to his life. Psalm 34, 14 says this, Turn away from evil and do what is good. Seek peace, say seek peace. Seek peace. And pursue it. Say pursue it. Pursue. See, so if you want to enjoy what is good, then do what is good. And I find it interesting that Zacchaeus has never seen Jesus. He hasn't seen Jesus, but he's heard about him. He's heard about Jesus. It sounds like the blind man that we met last week. He's never seen Jesus because he's blind, but he's heard about him. And Zacchaeus, who can't see, has heard about Jesus. And here's Zacchaeus' moment. Right? He says, I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. And the crowd was not having it, right? I imagine that as Jesus is coming into town, the crowd is lining up like a parade. They're getting all lined up. How many of you guys go to Cheyenne Frontier's Day Parade? Right? Okay, seven of you. Right? And so the goal is, is to, to get up and get prime, curb appealing, hope they throw candy at you kind of stuff. Right? You want to get there early. So the crowd hears that Jesus is coming. They're, they're packing the streets. Jesus and his entourage is coming in. Bartimaeus is coming in. And Zacchaeus wants, he just wants to see him. He just wants to see him. So here it is. The crowd is not letting him in. He's, uh, they're, they're not letting him budge, right? I'm not letting this thief come and see Jesus. I'm not going to let this crook see this one, right? I'm pretty sure they're not going to let the one who lives in the big house from their money have any weight. So I'm pretty sure they pushed him aside. I'm pretty sure that they shoved him out of the way. But Zacchaeus is desperate. Is there any desperate people here today? Zacchaeus was desperate because he what? I want to see Jesus. I want to see. He didn't want anything else. Scripture didn't say that he wanted to invite Jesus to his house. He didn't say I want to have a conversation with Jesus. All I want to do is see Jesus. But the crowd is pushing him away. You can't do it because of all the things that he's done to them. So he finds this sycamore tree. I looked up a sycamore tree. I wanted to see what a sycamore tree was. A sycamore tree is a pretty big tree. It's got a, it's got a big trunk. And some trees have lower limbs. These sycamore trees have lower limbs. So I'm pretty sure that since he climbed a sycamore tree, this, this tree actually had some low limbs. Now you got to remember, he is a short man, a wee little man, and a wee little man was he, who climbed up a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And then as the Savior walked that way, I will tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is, right? He climbed the sycamore tree to get a glimpse of Jesus. Listen, he didn't want to miss his opportunity. Can you relate to Zacchaeus? Maybe some of you right now in this room are struggling with the lack of peace inside of you. Maybe on the outside you play the part, but on the inside you're falling apart. Maybe on the inside you talk the talk, but on the outside you don't walk the Listen, listen to me, church, family. You do whatever it takes to get you to Jesus. Don't let the crowd stop you. Don't let Satan stop you. Don't let yourself stop you. Do whatever it takes to get yourself into the presence of Jesus. And if you've got to climb a tree, climb a tree. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 30 says this. A heart of peace gives life to the body. But envy rots the bones. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's something about peace. <laughs> so as I said, he walked his way. He looked up in a tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm 
Going to your house today. Going to your house today. Anybody go to Sunday school? Nobody yeah. goes to Sunday school. Amen. So I just I just say verse five through seven. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, wait a minute. Zacchaeus never met Jesus. Oh, he's only heard about Jesus. He's never seen Jesus. But Jesus stops where he's at. And he says, Zacchaeus, listen, in his mind, Zacchaeus was born. He says, he knows my name. I never met him. I want you to notice what he says here. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, because today it is necessary for me to stay at your house. Keep this up on the screen. I want you to notice something. Jesus didn't say, hey, Zacchaeus, come down, because i like to stay at your house. No. You see, this here was a divine appointment. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. It is necessary for me to stay at your house. Can you imagine? Jesus knows your name stops in the middle of the tree, maybe stops in the middle of your situation, and he calls you by name. Not come out of the tree. He says, come out for the situation. Let's get you out of that circumstance. Woo! It's good, right? Zacchaeus says, yeah, I'm coming down. Right? So he comes down and somebody comes up. How did he come down? Quickly. Quickly. I think he just jumped off the ramp, the ramp, right? Woo! Just jumped off. Right? I'm pretty sure it took a while because he was a wee little man. <laughs> so he quickly came down and he welcomed him, right? Jesus, joyfully. You welcomed him with joy. Zacchaeus comes down and he's filled with joy. And listen, look at all the people. The ones that he robbed, the ones he stole from, the house that he's living in, out for their money. Look what they start to do, right? Because they heard about Jesus. They get to see Jesus, probably touch Jesus. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is so good. Right? And then they begin to complain. He got to stay with a simple man. Who does he think he is? Right? They start talking out loud. He... Jesus chose this man over us? Can you imagine the looks that Jesus and Zacchaeus must have gotten at that moment? I wonder what some of the side comments were, were being said that, that uh, Zacchaeus overheard as he's walking with Jesus. Can I tell you something? When you're with Jesus, when you're walking with Jesus, it doesn't matter what anybody says. When you're in the presence of Jesus and you're just hanging with Jesus, it don't matter what anybody else thinks. Say it don't matter. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Right? So here's the thing. What does matter is that Jesus stopped and called him by name and said, let's go hang out at your place. Some of you have signed up to be table hosts at our uh, Christmas Eve event. A table host is a person who will sit at the table as families and uh, individuals will come and sit down at the table. And it is your responsibility just to strike up a conversation. Let them feel welcomed, right? This is, this is our house and we're inviting you into our house. So when you sit at this table, you are welcome. And you're just striking up a conversation. I just want to get to know you better. I just want to hang out with you more. I just want to, to, to do whatever it is that I need to do. There was this time there where this man was actually sitting at one of the tables during this Christmas Eve uh, time, and he was weeping. I mean, like, uncontrollably weeping. And I happened to be passing by, so I sat down next to him, and he starts telling me his whole story about what's going on in his life. And he said something to me that was very interesting. He says, he says Jason, listen. He goes, I am tired of surviving life. All I want to do is start living life. Oh, man, that was deep. And he was cut. He was hurt, right? Not like cut, cut, but you know what I'm saying. Right? Sometimes your heart gets cut. Sometimes your soul gets cut, right? And so here it is, and he's struggling. 
Because he says, I know I can be better. I need to be better. So I just started praying over this man. And I just said one simple thing, and it perked him up. It perked him up, right? That's just how God works sometimes, right? When you're praying over somebody and God gives you a word, you give the word. Don't wonder if you should give the word, give the word, okay? And so here I am praying, and I, I said this simple thing, and he, he just perked up. It was like a light bulb went on. Like it was an aha moment for him. And all I said was, Lord, this man is trying to fill his wallet. Teach him how to fill his bank account. And you knew that as soon as it was done, he knew exactly what he needed to do. You see, I don't know what happened to him, but I know Jesus sparked him up with his jumper cables. <laughs> I know that much. And I know this much. Jesus knows what you've done as well, but he also sees what you can become. It is not a mistake, listen to me, folks. It is not a mistake that you walk through these doors today. It's not. You see, Jesus has met you here. And it is by divine appointment that you came here today. Maybe you didn't want to come. Maybe you didn't want to sing the song. Maybe you didn't want to hear the word. Maybe you didn't want to take communion. Maybe you didn't want to give offering. Maybe you just didn't want to be here. But you came. And you walk through these doors. And Jesus is meeting you here right now. And I know for a fact that he's speaking to some of you right now. And I know that he's saying, I'm here for you. And he's saying, show me around. He's not talking about this building. He's talking about your heart. Show me around your heart. And he'll tell you, yes, I know your heart well. You see, peace is speaking to you right now. Say there's something about peace. Something about peace. Verse 8 through 10. Zacchaeus. Everybody's talking trash. This guy is going to the sinner's house. What has he done? He's robbed me. Right? They're not happy. And Zacchaeus stood there and he said to the Lord, while the people were coming in on him. Right? This is, this is Zacchaeus knowing that he was a sinner and knowing the grace that Jesus was showing to him. So Zacchaeus said, he says, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor, Lord. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay them back four times as much. You see that part right there? That's what repentance looks like. Repentance doesn't merely say, I'm sorry. He, he, Zacchaeus didn't turn around and say, hey man, I'm really sorry I did all that stuff. I'm really sorry. Nope. It actually makes amends for some wrongdoing. There's something about Jesus entering in your life that makes you want to correct things, isn't there? Right? I know I'm stepping on some toes today. Keep your feet down because I'm going to step some more. <laughs> There's something about Jesus entering into your life that makes you want to correct things. And Zacchaeus instantly received this peace. He knew that he had to make things right. And he wasn't interested in material things anymore. You see, he was interested in doing the right thing, correcting the wrong. Listen to me. Forgiveness gives you freedom. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness gives you freedom. It gives you peace. There was a time in my life about six, seven, maybe eight years ago where a family member and a friend did some ugly things to my family and said some ugly things as well. And it, it lit my fire. And I became angry, became angry about it. And I actually allowed this anger to, to fuel me. Because what these folks said, sometimes family members are just mean, aren't they? Oh, Jesus coming down now. <clears throat> sometimes family members can be just, they smell bad. Sometimes friends are really not your friends. At least you thought they were. And these, these fam this family member, a family member, and a friend did something horrible to my family, right? Said some horrible things. Words hurt too, don't they? Yes. Gotta remember to stay right here. <laughs> I can't. So, um, everybody.
Everybody online, just listen. <laughs> and it got me so mad that it, it fueled me to the point where I was bitter. You know what I'm saying? Come on. And it was, it was poisoning me on the inside to the point where I couldn't sleep at night. You know what I'm saying? Like every time I would think of these people, I would see red. And I would play in my mind, oh, if they can't hear me, I'm not going to get out. <laughs> Come on, don't we not do that? Yes. You guys are laughing like, it's just you, Pastor. <laughs> you are definitely special. Thank you. But I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, and it was it was really just eat me up, you know what I'm saying? Just eat it up, and bitterness is just poisoning me. And so I go and sit in my spot, you know what I'm saying? The, the porch. And I'm sitting in my spot. And, and <laughs> Jesus said something to me that was Jesus like. Jesus says, why are you carrying these things that don't belong to you? He says, Jason, you're better than this. He says, Jason, I taught you better than this. Mm. And he was right. Right? Because he's always right. So I deal with it on the inside. And then I call these people up. Said, hey, right now remember, they're the ones who attacked me. But I called them up and I said, hey, I want you to know for the last month or whatever, a couple months, I've been harboring this bitterness towards you. And it's been eating me alive. And I just want to ask that you would forgive me for harboring that towards you, right? I said it to both of them. And they said, yeah, I forgive you. <laughs> I was set free at that moment. Now you gotta understand, not one of them ever said, hey man, I'm sorry for what I did too. Not one of them. Can I tell you something? It don't matter anymore. It don't matter anymore, because I was set free. Right? Did it still hurt? Yeah. Did it in the back of my mind when I was like, hey man, Will you forgive me for all this bitterness against you? Yeah, yeah. And then in the back of my mind, I was like, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> we do that, don't we? Yeah. I wronged you, you wronged me. Let me correct it first. Give me mine. And when I was thinking that too, I was like, your turn. Because the Lord's like, I'm dealing with them. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not God, you're God. Okay. Can I tell you something? They have never done it. They've never, they never came to me or approached Trudy and I. You know what? I don't care. Because I'm walking in peaceful freedom of Jesus right now. Right? Matthew 6, 14 through 15 says this. For if you forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your offenses. Ouch. So my question to you is this. What are you holding on to that you need to let go? Because you're better than this. Because it's time for you to walk in the freedom of peace. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says this. And whenever, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. So that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoings. Listen, forgiveness doesn't set the other person free, it sets you free. Did you hear me? It doesn't set uh, the other person free, it sets you free. Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. The reason Zacchaeus instantly had peace was because peace walked into his house. Are 
Are you ready to invite Jesus into your house? Are you ready to invite him into your life? Because Jesus says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. There's something about peace. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's something about peace. 